This is it. It's the week of uh, my solar PV install by Forever Green Energy. So this video is going to basically be a time lapse of kind of the four days of the install. So one day is um, with the scaffolding going up and the other three days of the install. You can't see everything that's happening because there's some behind the scenes stuff with installing the inverter and the cabling and all that sort of stuff. But I'm trying to give you a little bit of an overview of what it looks like um, and then kind of conclude with my thoughts. It's just starting to rain, it's been about three hours and the guys have just finished putting up the scaffolding so both the house and the cave are all done. So let's just hope that Wednesday comes according to plan and uh, everything gets installed. Good progress for day one. Oh and as I should say the scaffolding guys are really awesome, uh, really nice and polite, did a good job, took care of everything. Uh, there's no damage to the roof of the workshop or anything which is fantastic like I asked. So. Uh, yeah, hope the rest of the week goes as well as it has done so far. I'm just recording this on my phone, not sure how well it's going to go down. Um, in preparation for tomorrow, I'm hoping the solar guys are coming. I haven't had the confirmation yet, but um, I'm going to run a, a cable and some string through the floor conduit that I have, or underground conduit in the garden, to make it easier for them to run the cables um, through. So hopefully it will save them a little bit of time. So I'll get that right now. Okay, so today should be the day that uh, the guys come for installation. I uh, didn't have a phone call yesterday, so not 100%, but uh, I'm all ready, I think. So the cave is in a bit of a mess, so I wanted to make sure that they could gain access uh, to the loft space if needed. So the projector's gone and all my desk area's gone. Um, but the weather is kind of overcast. I'm not sure if that's good or bad for installation. I guess as long as it's not raining, it's not the end of the world and uh yeah let's uh hopefully see if they uh turn up this morning and all things go according to plan <laughs> Oh,
Okay, so day three, but really day one of the solar install. So the guys have finished up. So as you can see, uh, some of more of the rails assembled things down here. They've got one of the rails on on the roof. So obviously you had to cut the slate and then I think they've put like this bed flashing uh, below and above to kind of keep it watertight. So that looks okay. Uh, I was not an expert, but they said that that's uh, all good. So I think it's probably gonna rain later anyway. So we'll, we'll see if everything goes okay. Um, they've run uh, a couple of the ethernet cables uh, through the piping that I that kind of helped them with. So you see those there. Um, one of those is for the Modbus meter, which goes into the, uh, the main, I guess, electric junction box, along with uh, another one, which will be for the Tesla power wall um, when that comes. They think that it's probably best not to run the DC power lines uh, along their nets of data cables, because there's phone lines, obviously, and those other cables. So they've dug um, a trench here that will go along and then um, drill into the garage to run that cable along. So just pop into the garage to show you uh, the progress in there as well. Actually, whilst we're in here, you can see these are the, the Pimar panels. There's 15 here um, right now. I think they weigh about 17 kilograms, something like that. Um, and the rest of them they'll be bringing um, later on. One of the main developments actually is they've done some more measurements on the roof uh, and the panels um, and they're going to put the whole 30 panels on the house roof so I won't have to have anything on the office which would be quite good uh, in a way because it's easier in terms of maintenance um, and they said they checked and it's fine in terms of uh, the roof structure being able to support um, that additional weight because I think it's only supposed to be 20 there and I see it now um, it would be 30 but um, yeah it's making some progress so uh, let's have a look in here and talk through kind of what's happening uh, for the inversions, etc. Okay, so here's the couple of Ethernet cables. Um, they've obviously started to put in the additional fuse board. One thing I did um, notice that um, some of the wiring and the selection of the fuses uh, in this board, uh, the electrician said isn't right. Uh, actually, it had been a bit dangerous so he said he's going to help change those out um, so he's telling me what to order i need to try and see if i can order those in i've spoken to the the builder uh, and electricians who did the work to find out what's kind of going on there so it's a bit, bit of a worry um but yes yeah, so we've got the additional fuse board and the isolator then obviously that's the the fit meter i think and obviously then the um hd wave here um i have got a cable an Ethernet cable to enable connection into that, as well as obviously I've got the additional wireless module. I'm not sure if we can see that here, but um, they're not sure if you can have the wireless and Ethernet connected at the same time for that redundancy. So I'm waiting for Solar Reg to come back to me um, on that one. But yeah, that's it for day one. They had to wrap up it early because when the guy's got um, something in his eye, so they're off to the eye hospital. Um, so see where we go on day two i think oh the only other thing is this modbus meter uh, requires power so we're going to run power outside from back, back behind the fridge hopefully to a nice neat cable out there to provide power to that so so far things are looking pretty good pretty neat um we had a discussion about the eddie and the harvey so that is here um, so that can be installed. We just had a little chat about positioning and how that will work in the future with the Zappy and everything. So yeah, so far making some progress. Let's wait for day four, but day two of the solar install. <laughs>
Okay, so it's the end of day four of the install, but day two of the actual solar guys being on site. So uh, a bit more progress um, today. So a few things have happened. Um, the Modbus meter has been wired in um, to the main, uh, I don't know what you call it now, the electricity income input box or whatever it is. Um, so they put a few spur uh, in the utility room to, to power that. They've run all the DC cables from the roof uh, into the inverter in the garage. So they had to obviously use that trench that they dug that I showed you yes, uh, the day before. Um, and they put some obviously armored trunking in there for those cables and then run them up through the garage and put those in. They've also run the ethernet cable that comes from the inverter to the mod bus and put a ethernet cable so from where the power will, will go um, into the that mains box as well because there will be a CT clamp for that. They've done a pretty neat job. So the Ethernet cable runs down the side of the house. Um, you can obviously spot it because it's grey. Um, maybe it would be a bit nicer if it was uh, black or in trunking or whatever, but not the end of the world. That can always be changed in the future uh, if needed, but very neat, neat well tacked job. Same with the cabling up to the roof and um, we've got a few more rails on uh, I think they've got two more rails left to do and they've put lots of the optimizers on as well so making some good progress there um, what else has happened um, i trying to think where we are now um, so to, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I think that's the majority the fuse board is all in all that's wired up I believe um so yeah tomorrow's job is obviously then to f get the next two rails up um so I'll get the rest, the rest of the optimizers on so it looks like i've done 20 so far so 10 more two more rails um 10 optimizers so basically there's going to be three rows of 10 up on the roof then obviously connect all those optimizers to the panels get that all turned on uh, and working and then they need to install the Eddie and the Harvey and obviously commission everything and then it should be working. So I'm not sure what the forecast is supposed to be. So I'm just looking now, sunny but rainy. So hopefully uh, rain doesn't affect play too much and hope there's enough daylight to, to generate something that is reasonable. But yeah, I think it's um, on track. They made a lot more progress today. So that's good. Uh, the guys are real friendly uh, and, and real tidy as well. So they've been tidy with their work, cleaning up before they go um yeah and respectful and everything so happy with what they're doing and it seems to be a neat job so far so good progress um yeah so uh, let's hope that tomorrow is uh, the wrap-up that we're looking for
Okay, so this is the last day, so day five of the solar install. It's just been finished and I saw some good generation for a split second. Now it's absolutely pissing it down. So <laughs> I'll show you some overlays um, of what's happened, but the guys have done a really good job so far. Really clean, tidy install. Thing that's really good on the roof, obviously once the scaffolding's down and the weather is better, you have to have a proper look. Um, they need to come back and finish off the Eddie install because the CT clamp for the Harvey uh, was broken, so they should be coming back for that next week to tidy that up. And they also need to, because of the rain, they couldn't put down some of the slabs they took up because it needs to be dry. So they're coming back to that. But it looks really good, so let me just um, kind of show you some overlay videos of the quick pictures I took. Um, go downstairs now and I'll show you that despite the fact that the, it's pissing it down, there is still a bit of generation, which is good. And uh, So you guys can see in here, what's happening? Okay, so right here, 124 watts. <laughs> So uh, not a lot, but anything's better than nothing. And like I say, it's absolutely crap weather out there. So I think um, what we'll do is later this evening, uh, I kind of do a, a little wrap up of my thoughts of the install over the week. Um, uh, give my feedback on Forever Green and the guys that did the work. Um, and then we'll have a follow up video uh, probably in a week or so's time. Well, definitely in a week's time, see how it's going. Uh, I don't have access to all the tools and everything um, for a little bit. I need to get obviously the certificates through and, and pay the, the final invoice and then uh, hopefully get access to what I need. So cool, let's uh, flip to a roundup. So that's it. That was um, my week of solar install. There's a few things still that need to be finished up. Um, the CT clamp um, for the Harvey was damaged in delivery so that um, I'm waiting for a replacement one of those and the guys will come back and fit that along with putting down the slabs they took up to bury the DC cables it's just been too wet um, to put the slabs back down so hopefully that will be happening next week but I've paid for everything now and I've submitted my MCS certificate and everything and now just waiting for my fit payments and I'll do some follow-up videos about understanding about uh, the feed-in tariffs as well as how the Eddy works and the Harvey works uh, and the Solar Edge and the different monitoring tools and everything. But this video is obviously just about the install. So I'm really happy with um, the way everything's gone. So we've had a shed load of rain in the last few days since the panels were installed. So fingers crossed that there has been no leaks and hopefully that will continue to be the way. Um, but as with all these things, this is why you have kind of warranties and everything in case there's any issues. But I was really happy with uh, the install by Forever Green. Uh, they did everything in the way I, I wanted it to be done. Let's say the main difference was the panels were put all on one roof versus um, a combination of the house and on top of the, the cave roof. But I think that works out best. They were really tidy, they were really polite. Um, they put the inverters where I wanted it all, and we spoke about um, you know how how the eddy and everything needs to be connected up. And like I said, they dug out that trench and put the cabling down and everything. So a really good job. They're they're nice and clean and tidy. And the only issue that I had is really that with communication, I guess, from the head office, just confirming exactly where everything's going to be happening or not. Sometimes I felt I had to obviously do a bit more chasing. Uh, but in their defence, um, most of these companies that do solar stuff seem to be the case. I think I mentioned in a previous video that I had I think seven or eight quotes um, in the end. And out of those seven or eight, there was, there was more companies than that that just never came back to me or said they were going to turn up and they never did. So I think it's just kind of an industry thing. Right now, they're probably all very busy doing, you know, 
three and a half kilowatt installs without any need to the DNO. So not saying it's right, but that's just something to, to keep in mind. Obviously, whenever you're going with anyone, um, try and get some set expectation as to what the communication is going to be like. But aside from that, I would use Forever Green again, and I will. So they'll be coming back, um, hopefully before the end of the year, if Tesla pulled their finger out to install the Power 2. And I will also have them back to install the Zappi um, when I get, uh, I guess, a full-time proper electric vehicle. Assuming nothing goes wrong in between, obviously, the CT clamp and the power wall and all that sort of stuff, I would continue to recommend and use them again. Um, like I said, I paid for this since this isn't a sponsored video or anything. Uh, I will put a link to them uh, down below. If you do decide to get a quote from them, mention, obviously, Dale Pearson and Spectrum Geeks. Um, hopefully they can, obviously, do you a good deal. Uh, I also might stand a chance of getting some referrals, so that'd be fantastic if you do decide to, to go with that. But with whoever you go with, obviously make sure you do your research, uh, ask the right questions and, and going open mind. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, I think that's it. So there'll be more videos to come. Uh, just to wrap up really, so it's been, how many days is it now? Friday, four days since the install was done and the weather has been pretty poor but I did have one pretty good day and I generated about I think it's 36.8 kilowatt hours in a day so that's pretty good um, I think so especially for this time of year so it's right now it's end of August 2018 so the days are getting shorter you know so it kind of goes downhill in between now and then but yes I'm happy so far and fingers crossed, I have no need to use that warranty uh, over the 10 years that I have. Um, I plan to take out the extended warranty on the inverter, but again, I'll talk about that in a separate video about the solar edge stuff. So I hope this is helpful. You get a good idea of kind of what the guys are like to work with, the quality of the install, you know, how neat everything is, and I'm, I'm happy. So yes, happy solar hunting. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.